Coming up on Theater Talk. I'm a sloth. <laughs> I am lazy. I, oh, I'm well, don't now by the word of that. My new expression is if I wasn't standing up, I'd be lying down. Well, okay. I have to disagree with that last comment. <laughs> because I, the, my parting words to her yesterday before the opening of the show was like, honey, you put me to work. No <laughs> slouching around you. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Now, Susan, there are a batch of new musicals coming to Broadway this spring, and the one I am most excited about is War Paint, a fascinating musical about the rivalry between uh, Helena Rubinstein and Elizabeth Arden. And it stars uh, two of the greatest musical theater performers, two of the greatest actresses on stage of all time. We are <laughs> very happy, I can see. <laughs> We're joined by the great Pat. Patty Lapone and the equally great Christine Ebersol. Welcome. Thank you. And they brought along, God knows why, their director, <laughs> Michael Grime. <Yay! laughs> Welcome all to Theater Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so Patty, we'll start with you. Uh, Helena Rubinstein, what do we know about her and what do you what have you come to admire most about her? I don't think we know that much about her because that name has um, gone missing in yeah. cosmetics in America at least. I'm not sure exactly what it is I admire about her. I mean, I'm fascinated with her. She was an incredibly complicated lady. Totally self-made. Yes, yeah. and, but what she accomplished is, is, is what is extraordinary. Um, both of them became these creators and CEOs of empires before women had the right to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And they were, uh, and, well, in Helena's case, I, I will not speak for Elizabeth, but... She was, uh, I think it was survival. More often, m above everything else, it was how to survive her, her, uh, her condition. She was born into poverty, cultured family, but yeah. poverty. And then she bucked her father by not marrying uh, his choice. And so she was banished from her home and, you know, farmed out to a, an aunt and then farmed out to Australia, mm -hmm. where, to uncles, where she, in fact, escaped potential sexual abuse, <laughs> went to Melbourne, started her business. Mm -hmm. uh, she left Poland and um, Austria with 12 pots of cream that her mother would apply on the eight sisters, um, <laughs> which was a combination made by a pharmacist for a very famous Polish actress. <laughs> and I don't know how the mother got the formula, yeah. but Helena took it with her and that's how she began her business. And that was the basis, wow. Uh, in Australia, in, in Melbourne. And then she, she was very clever, she was shrewd. And she knew how to connect with certain individuals that promoted her. Mm. I don't have any of those qualities that she has that made her successful. I'm a sloth. I am lazy. I, oh, I well, don't now, believe by the word of that. That's the truth. That's the truth. I keep saying, my new expression is if I wasn't standing up, I'd be lying down. <laughs> Your mind is very active when you're yeah. lying down. Well, 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 Chris, well you know, I would okay. have to disagree with that last comment. <laughs> Because I, the, my parting words to her yesterday before the opening of the show was like, "Honey, you put me to work. There's no slouching around you." <laughs> liar, Girl. liar. I, know. Well, I love performing, but after that, it's like downhill. <laughs> when I think of all the auditions that you two went through to crack into show business, it's impossible for you to have been lazy. Well. Do you want to answer that? Because I didn't go through that. I oh, because you went to the, through the performing group. The acting company. I acting company. my career. Yeah, the acting company. But, but I, so I, you were just lazy No, 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 no. Rocky. I All will right. do, I will say <laughs> that I was lazy and I never got, very rarely got anything I auditioned for. Really? That's why really? I gave up wanting roles and trusting what came in my direction was what I was supposed to do. Mm. Wow. But Christine Same, has a different story. Different. Were you... Making the rounds all those Well, I, I moved to New York when I was 20 years old. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and then did what every actor does when they graduate. I became a waitress. 
<laughs> and but it was an interesting thing for me because I had gotten an agent when I was at the American Academy because I did a play called The Robes Art Affair, which was about the young Queen Elizabeth and her affair with the keeper of the horses, or a supposed, you know, alleged <laughs> affair. The the person who represented the playwright, Frances Letton, was a woman named Lucy Kroll, who was a very famous Hollywood agent yes, at the time. Yes, know the name. And she came to see me in, in the show, and she took me on. Mm. And she called me one night and said, darling, you're on Broadway. And that's how it happened. So I, I didn't have an equity card. Um, I had, uh, earlier in the year, I had auditioned for Shepard Traub. Christine Andreas was playing the part of in um, Angel Street, which was the movie Gaslight, which right, was right. Angela Alex Lansbury's yeah. first film role. Mm -hmm. And she went on to do My Fair Lady with Rex Harrison, so they needed a replacement. So Shepard Trowell bought my equity card for me. Oh, and I, I left, wonderful. you know, I said, you know, got to leave you little people, the great white way <laughs> And then they so closed the, the show in right. three weeks, and I was back begging for my job. <laughs> so it was quite a humbling experience. But, yeah, yeah. that uh, was my launch. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Elizabeth Arden now. We have a little bit about Helen, Helena. Uh, what do you, is there something you admire or respect about her, and how did well, she build course, her yes, empire? Well, of course, yes, of course. And, and I th think that it's interesting how the competition between the two women really spurred them on, you know, to to do, outdo the other person and be better. Um, but there's a lot of similarity, you know, between the characters. Mm. And, you know, I just admire the, the fact that she came from this, you know, dirt farm in She was Ontario. poor, too. Yeah, yeah, very poor. Lost her mother when she was six years old to tuberculosis. Was sort of put in charge of the horses in the barn. And I think that was sort of served as a stabilizing force for her in this trauma that she experienced by losing her mother and what horses represented to her that somehow I think as the actor that's you know trying to instill the humanity in the character that that's kind of what state was the stabilizing force for her but also kind of was a way of delivering her out of the farm and into you know to the gates of the castle and perhaps through the doors and a know, horse that. that won the Kentucky Derby exactly yes. exactly she and I think that also represented that sort of high society yeah. and how she was going to you know elevate herself oh. from that and and then totally find acceptance you know yeah they she, were both Helen, Helena had the creams was there something that she had in the beginning was there? well it was really the packaging you know what but I mean that was, that, that was the kind of the, that's how we complemented one another you know yeah. and Michael that, it's so fascinating yes Michael we, we, reality, we know you're here don't worry <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to listen. We ever did it. You know, here's here's the wonderful book war paint. But yes. the, in real life, these two women, although they were they had big businesses in New York, they never met except perhaps they were once in a restaurant together. Yes, no, they went, they went to several events together. They were events together, yeah. but they were. Ahead, but you, but you've constructed this wonderful musical from two characters. Who, they didn't hang out. They didn't. I, no, they I were mean, com competitors, but they did not want to meet, correct? As far as yes, we as, know. Yes, as far yeah. as we know, as yeah. far as That's urban legend yeah. and the myth tell yeah. us. Nobody invited anybody It was anybody very to important that they, that they remain apart. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And so how, the musical takes you know, yes, great delight yeah. in how to put them in like situations, perhaps put them in places they, that neither of them are aware that they're both present. And, and, and they share men in a certain way. And that is, in fact, true. Yes. That, that is among the extraordinary realities Tell of the musical that. war paint. Um, Elizabeth Arden was married to Tommy Lewis, and not, not as quickly as it happens in our musical, but Tommy Lewis did, in fact, divorce Elizabeth Arden and go to work for Helena Rubinstein. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And uh, Helena Rubinstein also had a very, very close associate who left Helena Rubinstein and went to work at the Elizabeth Arden Company. They despised the two guys? Seemingly they, not. No. They, and both of those men lasted very, very, very but long one times and had healthy careers. Doesn't your guy he's going to bring the formulas? Right. That he does. He does. And, yeah, he does and, bring and, and I don't believe we've ever specifically read that, yeah. in fact. Mm. But That's, well, that is one of the wonderful inventions by our fantastic You don't that depict right. either of these women as being the best of wives or girlfriends but and they were in a life where men were treating them very badly they had to to fight that and then they did they didn't end up having the most harmonious relationships true mm. defend that well, true or false <laughs> no true yeah I, I i think that helena had a fear of intimacy i i, I because she her 
first husband, Edward Titus, loved her very much, and I think she loved him, but it was a real um, mixed match. He was an intellectual, she was not. And it was a long and, and hard relationship, even after they had divorced. And she had two boys that she didn't raise. And mm. she brought a family over from Poland, who she, in fact, saved from World War II, and put them in to work in all of her salons, but treated them like employees, and then pitted them against each other. Oh, God. So, <laughs> and why? <laughs> why? And you yet there's I mean? tremendous warmth and attractiveness <laughs> about everything she does as well. Do you know, there's, there's that interesting dichotomy. Yeah. That's so true of Elizabeth as well. Yeah. You know, they were great successes because they understood people and they knew how to get what they needed from people. And, and there were tremendous, tremendous personalities. And they were great salespeople, were they mm -hmm. not? And, yes. Uh, from, they invented from, marketing. Exactly. Branding from their and marketing terms that really weren't even around then. They, they created this. Yes, story. that extraordinary understanding of and, what their clients would want. Right. And, and also this notion, uh, terrible word, but it certainly has taken root, lifestyles. You know, Elizabeth Arden created the, the whole Elizabeth Arden lifestyle. You, mm -hmm. When you went into the spa, it was all mm -hmm. Elizabeth Arden. Exclusive. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And Helena Rubinstein collected a magnificent... That was her market. Yes. Her salon had artwork in yeah. it. Yeah. And she was. She, we, we were talking about this, Christine and I were talking about this earlier, and Christine said it. If you have money, you're eccentric. If you don't have money, you're crazy. <laughs> if, you're, if you have money, you're a collector. If you don't have money, you're a hoarder. Mm -hmm. You're back, yes, exactly. <laughs> and Helena... <laughs> Was a collector. <laughs> collector. She could afford the shelf space. Right? Well, yes, they made they yeah. made they made enough closet space. Yes, for and you, you know, I I thought of what I did admire about her. I'm sure I admire a lot. I just but I admired her real estate. She had serious real estate. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Not a lot of shows tr have that old fashioned out of town tryout the way you guys did in uh, Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know. Michael, what are the kinds of changes you're making out of town, and how involved are you guys in influencing the rewriting or the changing of the show? Are you interested to know what, you know? Absolutely. She learns about I'll her characters. I'll, I'll, I'll answer right. both of those terrific questions. Okay. <laughs> Certainly any show that I've been associated with that had a, a wing and a prayer mm -hmm. has had an out-of-town tryout. There yeah. are just too many variables on these musicals, you know, to, to, to get it all right, I think. So uh, we learned an extraordinary amount from our very, very smart audience at the Goodman Theater mm -hmm. in Chicago. The show has gotten streamlined. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's really, it's gotten leaner. We trust that information is landing. Mm -hmm. You actually make room for some emotional moments yeah. when you weed out some of the ideas. Some of the expository that, stuff. Exactly, yeah. not only expository, but some of the themes that we were very invested in. And you find the way in which that theme is actually landing. Mm -hmm. That event takes care of that theme. So now let's make a little more room for something that has a little more to do with the emotional life of these women. It's been that kind of process. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will say that uh, Christine and Patty have been extraordinarily influential and helpful in shaping this material throughout its entire developmental process, not only since Chicago to here. And it's, it's different now because you've had the experience of playing it. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had the, that, that extraordinary security of knowing what it's like in front of an audience, and you can bring that to it. But even before Chicago, Doug Wright, our book writer, and Scott Frankel and Michael Corey, our mm -hmm. composer and lyricist, were always, always, always in deep, interesting conversations with these two great Yes, how actors. soon did they understand they were going to be able to write for these voices? Well, uh, a as these voices became attached to this project, yeah. they began to write for they... these voices. You know, and it's not only the literal voice, but, you know, we had the huge pleasure of knowing Christine and Grey uh, Gardens. Of course, yeah. Yeah. We really... We know that. You were the outsider and, here, Patty. Well, but, but Patty also <laughs> got to develop this show with us for a number of years, and that was a huge pleasure when we got to know Patty, and, and all the material really got geared to them. And anything specific from either one of you uh, when you're working on the show out of town, something in your character that's not there that you think should be there that you contribute to? Any, anything that you adjusted in Elizabeth Arden while you were working on the, the part? Well, I think that... The for me the eleven o'clock number pink is really has so much information in it you know mm -hmm. so I think that that it was kind of you know working backwards from that you know that 
it, it's almost like a, a three-act play. It's like an aria, you know, doing that song. So there's so much information in there that, you know, was able to be laid out and, you know, the seeds got planted, you know, the footprint got planted so that when you got to the 11 o'clock number, uh, they weren't reveals. Oh, I see. Oh, so you've they were confirmations. Exactly. They, they, were, exactly. they, were, they were things that we mm -hmm. were, there was an extraordinary inevitability about exactly. them. Mm -hmm. They're still surprising, they're mm -hmm. still revelations, mm -hmm. but they're funded along the way. Exactly. And you have two 11 o'clock numbers. Yes, yep. we do. Well, <laughs> <laughs> two 930 numbers, and then <laughs> whatever you give your I think our producer yeah, wants us to say 915. <laughs> oh, <they're not laughs> we're like 1015. Okay. All oh, right, yeah, we're 10, starting 15. now at 8. Okay. Yeah. When we start at 7, see, the time we'll have was going 7 Fast for me, but I, thought I, I have to just say that, you know, I've done my share of musicals in this town and I've never worked with a more collaborative group of creators in my career, which gave me confidence to, in fact, voice um, a, an opinion. And the more I believed that they heard me, the more responsible I felt in really understanding my character and contributing um, if I felt I needed to. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've ever had that experience where that the actor was trusted as much. And I just have to say, years ago, when David Mamet, David Mamet's play The Water Engine yeah. was downtown at the Public mm -hmm. Theater, directed by Stephen Schachter, produced by Joe Papp, and they were going to move it from the Martinson up to the Plymouth. They were going to drop the fourth wall. And at that point, it was a radio show where we were talking, Colin Stinson came down and talked to the audience. We were in a radio studio. Mm -hmm. The on-air came on, on-air sign came on, and uh, the radio play started. He said, when we found out that we, they were going to drop the fourth wall, that we couldn't deal with the audience up at the Plymouth, he said, you can only be an audience member once, then you start to second-guess the audience. We start at A every single night, and you never take our perspective into consideration. And I went, holy, that is so true. And not... and. I say that because this is not the case. They know that Christine and I know what is going from the stage to the audience. Mm. And they trust our ability, our talent, and our knowledge. And that is rare, unbelievably rare. I mean, you guys have been around musicals a big part of your life. You know how they're put together, and but you know how they work. But that doesn't necessarily <laughs> Give us permission. Yeah. But it's also very rare to do a new musical. Yeah. yeah. I was going to use the word diva, but I'm, I'm told you guys both eschew that, eschew that word diva. You don't like the, you don't like the well, word Well, I diva? think it has a negative connotation, doesn't it? I mean, isn't that supposed to be for opera singers? It is. Sopranos. Yeah, I'm going to call you two-time Tony Award winners. <laughs> you know what we are? You know what I like? <laughs> We're bringing back the word dame. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? There were dames Broadway on Broadway. Dame. How about there broads? <laughs> <laughs> but I like broads. I like... But there were dames on Broadway. Do you know what I mean? It's Mary true. Martin, Ethel Merman. Those, they were dames. Mm -hmm. and, and not dames in the British sense of the word, but... You know, workers. Workers yeah. that you well, know, roll up, set roll up your sleeves. Yeah, workers. Yeah. Yeah. Roll up your well, sleeves. I think right. of it as, as yeah. you know, great larger than life stage personalities. And um, I was amused, Michael, um, when they, when before we started, uh, uh, the women were being having the makeup done, and um, there was some discussion about whether or not you were going to come to say hello to Michael in the dressing room. And Michael stood up and said, "No, I'll go say hello to them." So, as the director, well, you know how to treat the dames. <laughs> They're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Are they easy to direct? Yes. You know, um, it's, I, I think we, we all speak the same language mm -hmm. these days, and we can, we can get into very small details mm -hmm. and recognize the enormous impact of refining those small details mm -hmm. at this point. But also, you are directing an extremely complicated and beautiful show technically. You were maneuvering this world. Oh my God! Well, I thank you oh for my that. God! That, yeah, well, this gorgeous world of the of New York and the shops and the. Yes, we're all supported right. spectacularly by a great design. Team. And the costume changes. We've all been around this business for a while now, and I'm curious when you have these great performances, big roles, and we enter in very soon into the Tony Awards season. What do you make of the Tony Awards? What do you make of the politicking for the Tony Awards? The campaigning of the Tony Awards? Are these things as important to you as perhaps they once may have been in your career, or just let it go? Uh, I try to have low expectations. <laughs> Therefore, I'm not disappointed. Mm. But I also feel like I have 
two Tony Awards, that <laughs> seems like a lot to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't need to prove anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I can just enjoy being on the stage and keeping my nose to the grindstone and doing my job and doing my work and deriving great pleasure and enjoyment from the cast members and particularly Patty on stage. That's a great, that is such a great privilege. Uh, Back at you, Christine. Yeah. Um, Honest to God. What yeah. do you think about that whole Tony Award I talk and scuttlebutt? And well, don't the producers do the campaigning? Because yeah. I don't understand. I, I, I don't think I've ever campaigned. I don't no, I, well, they make you go to. You the have to go to all. Oh the yeah, they make. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just go to those. Oh, well, that's I didn't know, what that is. I didn't know that was campaigning. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was campaigning. <laughs> I thought that was just something we were <laughs> obligated to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was campaigning. But I better behave better. <laughs> 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 no, I think. Well, I've always said that you can't compare characters. Mm -hmm. You we there, so I don't understand why we don't have a celebration of the theater and just throw the awards around. You know what I mean? <laughs> if there's five people that they think did a great job directing or designing, throw the awards at them. I think the more it's a com competition, the more um, people feel like losers. Mm. And that's, we're celebrating theater. We're celebrating this. So it's our job to make sure that it is that celebration. Right. right. It's our job to really look at it that way. Right. And yeah. to recognize that the recognition is wonderful and every success helps everything else. So that's, it's up to us not to get bogged down but it's, it's, in the competitive nature yeah. of it and instead think of it as a celebration. Right. Exactly as but you said. it's crazy how it, how, um, only if we let it. No, but all, I'm only saying it's, you know, like it, that it, the gossip and stuff like that, where all of a sudden something gets a Tony Award because it it can go on the road and they can put on their marquee Tony Award winning show, and you're thinking, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are we doing here? Yeah, or they you know what they say now. They 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 have so many producers above the title. You know, some shows have oh, eighty thousand. They can vote yeah. and they they all could all vote for their own show. So they actually want eighty thousand producers above the title because those are eighty thousand votes for the show. Yeah, That's how crazy it can be, and you can't let it get in the way. How about those Oscars? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was our producer. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark Platt. Yes, of course. I forgot Mark is producing uh, yes. uh, War Paint. <laughs> I hope there's not a repeat at the Tony Awards. Um, uh, can I ask you very quickly, uh, anything you admire about a particular moment that she has in the show? Oh when you're God, watching, when you're standing watching her? There are more than one moment. I listen to her every single night. I just listen to Christine. Do you know what I mean? It's not that I tune out everybody else, but my ears perk up when Christine is speaking, especially when she's singing. And I can't, I can't, I, I would start at the top of the show, if you'd like me to, and point out the moment, <laughs> her entrance. <laughs> is it good hip, with hip, a hat? Hip, hip. Um, <laughs> she's in my, in my performance. Christine's performance is in my performance. Because hmm. you're responding to her, to her... Because I love what she's doing as Patty loves Christine. Mm -hmm. And yes, mm -hmm. because... But there's always something alchemical. Because, because everything affects everything else. Yeah. You know, and, and you are such an extraordinary instinctual actor that, you know, things come in and they have an effect. And that's and I, equally yeah, true of I mean, you. Yeah, exactly. And you watch it over time. Yes. I mean, I've watched it over time, the way in which they've hooked into one another. Mm -hmm. It's quite extraordinary, and you know, the, and that development continues as they get to know each other better. For me, I can speak personally that Patty has really been an inspiration to me, and she's really made me stronger. Hmm. Hmm. In terms of your performance yes. style, because mm -hmm. you're good tennis partner, so to speak? Well, like I say, she put me to work, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the lazy one, huh? <laughs> no the lazy one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a compliment, honey. No, no and did they really, have different, different, it's really true. Different styles, could you describe them? Uh, yes, I, I, I do believe that there are different approaches. And what is Christine's and approach, would you say? I think Christine thinks about things. Uh, I, I, I think that Christine is, uh, this is true for Patty as well, I'm going to say, I extraordinarily language driven, really uh, wants to really parse what the utterances are and then fills in blanks. And then, and I'm speaking in terrible generalizations, forgive me. And Patty, I think, works, you know, from flesh and blood. 
So maybe it's more a little more kishka. Maybe there's a little more mind and a little more kishka, a little more <laughs> gut. But they get to, ex to a very similar, extraordinary place. Yeah. It's amazing how much we are similar, <laughs> Christine and I. We've known each other mm -hmm. since we were kids in this business. Mm -hmm. And we just never associated, hung out, friends, whatever. We've just, like, you do know people in show business. And then when we started to work together and just talked, mm -hmm. there were so many similarities in our lives, mm -hmm. what our priorities are. Mm -hmm. And then we are so um, enough different on stage that we are like it's that. Compatible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's so rare. And it's, it's, it's such a joy and such a relief. Do you know what I mean? A lot of times you get on stage, you might get nothing. You might get hatred. Do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, yeah. then, but mm -hmm. then when you have chemistry. Mm -hmm. That's it. It makes the, the job easier in that way. Way easier. Yeah. All right, the, the kishka. And uh, what, what are you, the uh, brain? The brain. The kishka. The, the, the kishka. And you know, nobody, brain. nobody likes being uh, the kishka uh, and the brain and the director. I don't mean to boil anyone down. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, War Paint, starring Patty Lapone and Christine Ebersol, uh, directed by Michael Greif, and it is at the uh, the Nederlander Theater. Big, big hit show. You do not want to miss these performances. Thank you all for being our guest tonight. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. That last compliment. <laughs> Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.